Hello, everyone, and welcome to another K6 Office Hours. I am Nicole van der Hoeve, and today I've got Paul Baylog back with me. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hope everyone's been having a good week so far. Today, we're going to talk about different ways to visualize metrics in K6, since that's a pretty common use case for, um, for K6 that you want your results to show up, except there are some issues with that, especially if you're just looking out of the box. But we will get to that later. First, some announcements. The first thing is you may not have seen, but we had a K6 community call and it was the first of its kind. That was done by Leandro Melendez, our colleague and Paul here as well. I'm just going to put the, the link in the chat there so you can have a look at it. It is an awesome show and the intention is for it to be timed to the releases. So every eight weeks is our development cycle and that one is going to be talking about features related to K6 the open source tool in particular, maybe sometimes cloud as well. I think we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> we were we tried to get there, but then uh, yeah, uh, time wasn't uh, wasn't in our our favor. Uh, <laughs> but that's a good thing, though. It, we, that means that we did a lot of talking, plenty of talking, and I think everybody had a lot of fun with it too. So, looking forward to more of those. Yeah, so that's that's awesome. And also we had the K6 News one, which Leandro did as well. And, and a few people, including Paul and I think it was Ivan, Ivan right? Paladino? Yeah, Paladino, who, yeah. Yeah, yeah who, one of our developers who was also on there. So we're growing our K6 DevRel team. So that means more content from us. And maybe that's a good segue into... The fact that we're hiring. <laughs> hey, who knew? Yeah. yeah. So we are not the hiring managers for these roles. And we're also not the recruiters. We're just people who work at K6 and have a vested interest in choosing and getting a coworker that we, you know, we actually like rather than tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you watch K6 office hours, you're already like a cut above the rest. <laughs> Mention that in your interview, <laughs> maybe. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, From DevRel, we're hiring for two positions. One is a browser testing one, and the other one is for chaos engineering. So very different roles, and looks like both both Paul and I are representing Grafana with our awesome Grafana sweatshirts. If you want <laughs> one too, join us. <laughs> yeah. You know, and these are supposed to be, I think, ugly Christmas sweaters, but I don't think they're ugly. It's no, kind of cool, they're not. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to look like a dashboard? Right, right. <laughs> and I mean, I, and, and this was not planned either. I mean, this I was, uh, you know, this was our, our talk on visibility and metrics. Uh, so yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah, uh, like minds. <laughs> fresh back in 86. Ooh, that's my birth yeah. year. <laughs> Says they're trendy. Oh, <laughs> wow. I get it. <laughs> birth year. Oh, see, now yeah. that's bumming me out because that's when I got out of uh, high school. So. <laughs> now you're just dating yourself. Oh. You, know, you could have gotten away with it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, we have a CFP open and also just signups if you don't want to speak for Grafana Con Line 2022. That is Grafana's big virtual for now conference. And I've put a link there, but there it is as well on the video. It, it's pretty awesome. Um, I spoke at the one last year, and that's where, if there are new features that are coming out, that's where they get announced. So, so I think that it's a, a really good. Oh, wait. No, I spoke at Observability Con. Never mind. But <laughs> the uh -oh. announcement of the acquisition of K6 by Grafana was announced in Grafana Conline. So that sort of big announcement um, it, it would be would belong there. So, so if you don't want to speak, join us. Post, yeah, and we can fix that in post production, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Except we're streaming to LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, Oops. and Twitter. But yeah, yeah other yeah. than that, we can totally we fix yeah. it. Yeah, we just need the Scooby Doo time machine, you know, to be able to go <laughs> back in time a little bit and correct that. Yeah. Also, another thing that I wanted to give some love to, and this is the last one, 
It's something that we don't mention enough, I think. And it is Awesome K6. It's a GitHub repository of just, well, awesome things that K6 users in the wild have created. <laughs> and it's mostly not even from the K6 team. It's just some really cool stuff in there. Every time I look there, I think, oh, why didn't we already do that? <laughs> but some user has already created it. So yeah, it's a really good example of the open source community that's built around K6 as well. Yeah, definitely. And if anybody finds anything, uh, be sure to forward it on or uh, throw up a pull request. Uh, it's, it's all out there in the open. Yeah. So today, Paul, we are talking about performance testing results. And the reason that I wanted to, to talk about this is that I actually think that interpreting performance testing results or load testing results is the most valuable part of the load testing process. And that's a little surprising to, to some because there's a lot of focus on the scripting part or maybe even the planning part and definitely execution. But if you've gotten to that point and you still don't know how to how to analyze the data or, or turn them into something meaningful, then what really was the point of the test? It's, you know, definitely. I mean, if you can't visualize it, it's, you know, it's, uh, that just yeah. helps to bring home the point of how your tests are doing. It's also just difficult, right? Because load tests, the bigger that your load test is, the more likely it is that there's going to be a lot of data. Yes, yeah can definitely be overwhelming. And even with our uh, summary, you know, you get that uh, the output of all those, just the numbers, you know, the P90, P95, all that good stuff. And then it's just like, yeah, it's, it can be a little Oh, hey, well, maybe let's, let's kick it off there and start okay. off with a demo <laughs> right away. Because <laughs> um, I just want to see, show like what I think the, the problem is, uh, how long no. is this going? Yeah. Yep, it's just for one. Let me there, that's a little bit better. So these are the results that you get from K6 right out of the box without any any plugins or, or any changes. This is just the default. And the problem is that this can be, I mean, there are a lot of figures here. And even when you understand, like for example, the HTTP rec duration is the response time. And if you're only looking for the response times of the ones that, of the requests that passed, you should be looking at expected response true. So in this case, the average would be 118.23 milliseconds. And by the way, if you're wondering if wondering why these are all the same figure, that's because I just ran this for, for one user, one iteration. But this is still not enough, right? Even if you think about it, if you have a thousand requests, that the, the success of the test is going to be boiled, is it boils down to at least here, it's distilled to a number or a line of numbers. And that's never going to accurately encompass what the test was like. So averages are really pretty average in, in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some better ones, like that's why we include not just the average, but the minimum, median, and max, so you get a feel for the range of the response times, and then also the percentiles. So P90 is the 90th, 90th percentile, which means that 90% um, of, the, of the requests in this test reported a response time of 118 milliseconds or less. And the same thing except for the 95th percentile, except it's 95% of the requests. And that's, those are better ways than just using the mean or, or the, the average. But I personally still really like being able to visualize the, the results on a graph. Fernando is saying here, the HTTP rec failed always tricks me because the X makes me think that the test failed, but it actually failed to fail. Yes, right. <laughs> we actually had a discussion about just that topic. I think we had like three meetings, it's, seriously, yeah. <laughs> because we could not decide. And personally, I still think it's a little bit 
um, non counterintuitive. So what he's talking about is this HTTP rec failed, which is kind of like the error rate. When it says 0% here, you might think that that um, well, that one is pretty good. That's the error rate. So no, no requests failed. But this is the confu confusing part, because it makes you think that there might have been one error. But actually, that means that th there was one request for which ATT HTTP rec failed was true. So this test had no errors. So good, no. <laughs> good call out there, Fernando. Yeah, it is. It is a bit confusing. Definitely can throw you off there. Yeah. So I think another reason why this is not enough or, or why this is difficult, because you, you might you might say that you can just output the raw results, right? But the problem, an additional problem is that it's not just the response time, like we we're already talking about the error rate. K6 stores a lot of those metrics. And on top of that, you can have your own custom metrics too. So that's a lot to be to be writing to somewhere. So there is a chance that you're you may even be doing it too much if you have too many of those metrics because each one of those has to it's also time series data. It's not just a single instance. You're probably collecting multiple of them that are tied to a timestamp because you want to be it, with if you take out the time dimension of metrics then it's going to be pretty worthless, really, because a response time that you get when your test hasn't even ramped up to the full number of virtual users might really not tell you much at all. Right. Yep. Definitely. And there we have the segue. Let's let's see those <laughs> let's see those graphs. Let's. Uh, I'm I'm excited because I'm wearing my my sweater. I'm ready. To yeah, see you just want to see graphs. Yeah, so <laughs> you want to connect the dots. <laughs> it's uh, you know most most managers I've worked with. That's always you know that's what works with management is they want to see the pretty pictures. They oh yes. See, you know those trends. The the numbers don't uh, you know while important obviously they don't uh, they don't carry that weight with them the impact. <laughs> that's a good point, and I I think it's not just managers too. I. I like to see the, the distribution, the shape of the, yes. the load test as well, rather than just having to rely on numbers. Yep. Yeah. So let's look at one, one way to do that is to use the built in output to CSV. I like C, you can also do JSON, but I like CSV because I, I guess that's what I'm used to. I can output that and, and visualize in Tableau or something. So here's how, oops, K7, K6 run, uh, and then you just do dash O, or you can do dash dash out, either way is okay. And you can put CSV equals, let's say simple result CSV. Oops. Oh, of course, I, I didn't even put the, <laughs> the script name. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to actually identify your script. <laughs> so let's have a look at that, that ran. But if you look at the file structure here, ooh, look at that. Isn't it pretty? Now, the thing is, you probably won't want to stop here because this is still kind of difficult, you know, to get a feel for it. And this is also just one iteration, one user. So you can imagine that this will get unwieldy. You really have to put this out somewhere but i like csv because you know worst case scenario I, I don't really like it but some people still use excel you could do it there and it is something that most people will have at least like even people who aren't used to dealing with a lot of data sets might have some sort of spreadsheet app i like using tableau which is really a business intelligence tool, but I also really like using it for, for load testing data. Okay, and then I'm gonna ask a question here because I'm the new guy and then I can be, I can be dumb for at least for a little <laughs> bit longer, hopefully. You um, can no. always be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> And it's it's, right. it's not dumb. <laughs> oh, okay, now, um, so with the, the CSV output, is that an extension? 
or is that just built into the native binary? Nope, just built in. So this is okay. all core stuff. So cool. you can also do JSON if you'd like. Let's let's try that. Uh, so I think it's just JSON um, results at JSON. Yeah, uh, that's in your performer is Leandro Melendez, and he's saying we are all <laughs> dumb in our own ways. Absolutely. Just trying to make sure that we're dumb in different ways so that we can actually help each other through it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this Diversity is what it's all about, dumbness. right? Yes. Yeah. Diversity and dumbness. So that's what this looks like. And both of these are just in the in the default binary, no custom anything about it. Still would need another tool for it though. Yes. Yeah, see, and I see the uh, JSON output, and this goes back to previous lives and things. But uh, and then I think, oh, that looks just like the log output from, uh, you know, uh, we would have audit logs or something going into Splunk, and then you could use mm -hmm. that to do the, your visualization, which you know, obviously you mentioned something about Tableau. Uh, but yeah. anyway, but yeah, that just triggers some, uh, you know, kind of like in my spine. It's like, oh, flashbacks. <laughs> Bad ones. Yeah. No. This, <laughs> Not necessarily. They can be. <laughs> this also the stats D integration. Um, is this what you were going to show? No, you, you were going to show a different one, right? Uh, yes, I was going to show um, as far as the uh, the plugins. No, I was going to show up. Uh, oh, my. Influx. Yeah. In, Influx okay. and uh, yeah, Prometheus and uh, Timescale. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you can do stats D as well. And look, Kang Lee from LinkedIn says people like me come from Jamie to results dashboard and HTML, then Grafana. Any thoughts have that feature enabled in K6? Well, mm. Kang Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the right place to come to. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead, Paul? <laughs> because well. Paul's just about to show that. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So yeah, there was some kind of discussion we were having about the uh, the whole HTML dashboard. Now, this is a contribution, and let me, uh, let me uh, click here to show my screen. Okay, all right, and then uh, let me find my notes. Boy, I am a consummate professional here. Um, I was all ready to go. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> uh, <fine. laughs> And now I do want to say that I do have this out in the uh, GitHub repository. So any of this demo, um, people want to get to uh, get their hands on it, kind of play around with it. I do have this available out there. So, um, but yeah, so we were talking about with this uh, HTML dashboard. Now, this particular one I'm going to show you is uh, it, it's as you run your tests, as it's actually running. So now this is an extension, so which can be kind of scary to some folks, but uh, and let me just copy over some of my uh, commands here. Um, and it's really, it's not that scary. But this, in this case, I have a Go language development environment set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So what I'm doing right now is I am installing this tool called XK6. And this is, this is just our builder that will actually allow us to pull in extensions. Um, which are not in the normal, uh, you know, uh, code base in the normal utility. So here I'm going to bring in, and this is this uh, GitHub.com. This is again, it's from a contributor, and then they created this XK6 dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new K6 binary. Now with it being that quick, and uh, let me, uh, uh, all right, let me kill that. There we go. Okay. Um, so now what has happened here is that this has created a new K6 binary for me. And then this is going to have that additional tool. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and in my notes. I've got this guy here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and trigger off this run dashboard. Oh. There we go. All right. And just like with uh, Nicole, I got to provide a script name. 
Um, so. <laughs> Isn't it embarrassing when that happens and it's people like, are watching you? I know that's that's why I'm I'm horrible and I never do pair programming <laughs> because then it's just like I completely lose my mind and it's like I I don't know how to spell I don't know how to even yeah. type or anything <laughs> I mean I'm just kind of like uh you know staring at the screen so it's okay we'll uh, fix yes. it in post yes exactly that's a good thing. So now if I come through here, uh, here we go. So right now my test is actually still running. Okay, I have this going for a little bit. Now there is a little bit of a delay with this. And then uh, again, this is a contrib contributor uh, extension. So I, I have not gone in there and played around with it too awful much. But you'll see that this in here, my uh, test is completed. So this is, ugh. Um, yeah, huge and terrifying looking. And let me see. All right, there we go. So here, you know, we'll see now we have different values for the P90s and all that good stuff, but we do have this output. So I haven't tried saving this or anything like that, but uh, anyway, but this is just one of the options that we do have with the extensions. Um, so that is that is a pretty sweet uh, contribution. And that's kind of that X well, that HTML dashboard that you can get. Now, I think Nicole is actually going to show some of the other ones. Yeah, sure. So I think the way that that one works is that I think the the contributor that created that, Ivan Skiba, I think that he has a Netlify app and yes. it goes through to that app. And that's yep. actually what we're looking at. But maybe, I don't know, perhaps that's a security issue or you, you just want a little bit more control. Um, with JMeter, the HTML reports, and with Gatling too, by the way, those are not real time. They're just generated afterwards. So I'm going to show you another way. As, and it's this way, it does not use an extension. So yeah. And I was going to throw in there too, though, actually that what, what that one's doing as well is it's actually creating Prometheus type metrics uh, mm. that it's using to, to pull those in. So, sorry. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So this one that I'm going to talk about is one from Ben C UK. It is called the K6 Reporter. You'll notice it's not XK6 because you don't need to create a custom binary of, of K6. You're just importing a library. So I've put that link in the chat and this is the readme for it. You need to do two things. The first thing is import HTML report. So I'm going to do that live, go back to my script. I'm going to add that here. And then um, maybe, okay, let's, let's make it so that it's not just one thing, but maybe let's make it one minute. And then the other thing is there is natively K6 has a, a handle summary function, and that's what it uses to generate the default kind of end of test summary. But in this one, he's using that and he's overwriting it and, and adding a, an HTML report. So I'm just going to copy that and I'll put it at the end, Let's save that. And then this time, uh, I think it's, maybe I should have a look. It was, um, you have to output to the dashboard, I believe. So that's going to be what, what it looks like. It would be helpful if I remembered. Uh, I think it was run. Oh, oh wait, see there again, I was going to forget the, the test. Um, I mean, who would do that? I know, right? <laughs> Oops, I don't think it's, it's dashboard. Now, what was it? Let us uh, see, I, of course I would forget, I just did this earlier. I was like, oh, I will remember that, no, but no. no. It's a good thing we have post-production. Yes, how to do, I don't suppose you remember. On uh, which one again? The, uh, 
Yeah, this no. Ben, this K6 reporter. Oh, yeah, no, I have not played around with that one yet. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I do not remember it. Might have to come yeah. back to that while you're, <laughs> you're yeah, showing that's the, it. <laughs> that's the the final HTML report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know we talked about this one on another episode, though, so I don't know. I know. I, fe I feel like. We have uh, talked about this one. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to, to look at that again. I've totally <laughs> forgotten. I'm sorry. Um, why don't we pause and we, why don't you go and do your thing, Paul, and then I will come back and actually show you how to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So what was I supposed to do again? I don't know. No. Okay. So here we were going to talk about, <laughs> um, let's see. Let me get my notes back out. So now this happens to be something that uh, something came up yesterday. And then I did throw a, a gist out there in GitHub um, where somebody was asking, they were wanting to run the XK6. Again, it's the extension stuff. That's that's going to be my uh, home going forward and everything. But but yeah, but the XK6 SQL. So they, they wanted to do load tests against a SQL database. Well, we're not going to go totally into that, but... Uh, Anyway, there was some difficulty where um, they wanted Paul? to try to. Yes, you figured. I'm you sorry. Found it. <laughs> sorry about oh, that. Oh man! Thank okay. you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jivanandan Kesavan. I am an idiot. Uh, you don't Output. have to do anything. No, you don't. That's why I was confused. You don't even have to do anything. So all you have to do. So so let me undo this you just have to do a ksx run that's it and this one is for a minute and while we're waiting for that i would like to show you the other thing that confused me because there is another not an extension it's called ksx html reporter and this one um this one is a little bit more more complicated um, you do have like you have to set the the path there and stuff and this is what i was thinking of when when i did that but this one actually does not use any of that and it's just you just run it simply like without any dash dash out or anything and after this runs you should get an html um an HTML file here that we should then be able to open up. So uh, there you go. Thank you, thank you, Jivanantan, <laughs> for reminding me that we don't have to actually do anything. Sometimes we just overcomplicate things. So there we go, generating <laughs> HTML summary report. And, and we can see the HTML here already, but of course we don't wanna view it like that. So let's bring it up here. Um, let me, so that's the summary HTML here. I'm just going to open it up and look how pretty. Yay. Right? There it so, is. yeah. So sorry about that. <laughs> I just forgot. <laughs> but yeah, and perfectly suitable for, uh, you know, storing as an artifact from your CI CD pipeline. So. And I like that that we didn't have to do it. We didn't have to mess around with XK6 at all. Some people are not that comfortable with that, with, with going into Go. Maybe they, they can't or don't have Go installed. And all that this took was this importing line and this handle summary function. So it's, it's pure code and it gets generated. So what that's doing is it's just taking the the raw report, the raw results from K6 and putting that in an HTML kind of format. So this is way more secure if you don't want to have to send these results elsewhere. So it doesn't go to any server. It's just parsing it and and putting it in HTML format. And it's also like a good quick way if you just wanted to see without without having anything set up. You can also have other stats here, even the data received and sent, which is kind of cool. Oh, I only had one um, check here, but 681 passes, so that's cool. 
Maybe I should have veiled some so that we'd get some red, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, Paul. Now, no, now yeah, you can no. go. So that interrupted my whole flow. <laughs> But, I'm uh, sorry. That's all right. No, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what Friday at five thirty for me. Uh, so. <laughs> for you, yeah. Well, that you know, I can start drinking now. I mean, it's close enough to noon. For yeah, me, I right? think so. It doesn't make me have a problem. Um, but uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it was a perfect segue, though. How you were saying about uh, go and you know not requiring go, and that's that's that is kind of some of the uh, the problem with S XK6 that worries some people. Maybe that uh, you know it's like, well, I got to pull down this go code. I had to recompile K6 and to include that functionality, and that can be a little bit uh, you know overwhelming if you're not a developer or you just I don't know. You don't have to be a developer. It's not that difficult, but uh, what we've got is now we can do this all with uh, a little bit easier with Docker. And that's something that pretty much everybody has. And I'm going to throw this up here again. So this is me. Uh, this is my uh, repository. So if you do want the links to this, if you want to run this stuff at home, you know, feel free. So I'm going to go ahead and add to my screen. And see, I, you know what I think what it is that's throwing us off is that Victor's not here. You know, Victor, uh, <laughs> for those those in the know, Victor uh, Far Farchich was uh, joining us for the last two episodes. So I think, I don't know, he's supposed to be here, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> you, we still have a little Victor in our heads. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fire this up. Now, I'm going to. Let me let me go ahead and bring in my notes. I'm just going to show these because otherwise I'm just looking all over the place and and all that. So again, this is from my repository that I've got out there, um, so you can play along at home. So, all right. So again, what what this is is so with the extensions, I'm I'm going to be demoing uh, the three different outputs. I'm going to be demoing to Influx DB. I'll be in you know time scale DB. And then Prometheus as well. Uh, since we're with Grafana, Prometheus is really the preferred thing. And it's kind of a de facto standard out in uh, Kubernetes land and everything in the cloud. So it's a really powerful back end. Now, in all these cases, I'm going to have Grafana on the front end to actually do the visualization. It's uh, really these are just the back ends for those. And then they do have an effect on the uh, the format of the data underneath. So uh, you'll see that, unfortunately, the dashboards are not exact, really the same between the three. So here's what I'm going to do is, OK, so let's let's uh, let me copy this command in here. And so now what this is going to do is this is going to actually go through and let me kill this doc again. It's on. It keeps coming back to the wrong window. Um, supposed to be on my other monitor, not in the way here. So, um, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do a uh, Docker build. Okay. And then I'm going to generate this thing. So I don't know, should I go into the details of the Docker file? I, I probably shouldn't, but, but what, what's going to happen here is that this is pulling down all the source code. It's creating a Go environment. Don't worry about that. I actually have a Go environment set up because I that's it's what I do. But uh, anyway, but I'm using Docker to do this. It's pulling down all the, the Go dependencies. It's pulling down the extensions. And again, it's I'm pulling in three different extensions. I'm pulling in the extensions for... Um, for again, for for influx, for time scale, and for Prometheus. So this is all going to be in one big, uh, not bloated, but you know, one large K6. So I'm going to be able to do all these options with the same build. Now, I wanted to go and show that, and you'll see that this is actually right now. This step here is running XK6. It's pulling in all these different uh, extensions and is building it. So. Um, I just wanted to show that there's no kind of like I didn't have anything sitting off to the side, you know, beforehand. Uh, this is what you're going to experience as you you're run totally it. cheating. Exactly. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> don't look, you know, don't look behind the curtain. Uh, <laughs> so you're making me see. look pretty bad here, Paul. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mess up a little bit. All right. <laughs> Well, it didn't pass compilation yet, so there's always a chance. 
Um, something could <laughs> happen in just this last minute. You know, somebody might have snuck in a, a pull request somewhere to an extension. So, uh, so what okay. I like. What I like yep. about this approach is that it's not going to change like the ways that I showed. There are ways to to kind of have your own configuration, like maybe you want to display it a different way from the default, especially the one that I that I just showed the one from Ben C UK. But with this way, it's kind of like there's no there's going to be you can just give this to somebody else who doesn't who might not have the go environment yes. installed yep. someone who's not a developer and you will have the same report you'll have yes. access to the same dashboard and results yep yeah and then uh, you know and then that's what's uh, what's nice about it too is that yeah it is it is portable uh and then this is going to actually run everything for me locally so now i you know not to be uh, a you know, how do you use Docker, all that stuff. But anyway, I'm just wanting to show that none of that stuff is running. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to, I have this pre-prepared Docker Compose, which is from the, uh, again, in the repository, and I'm going to start up my servers. Now, what I this is actually- I think we should have doing, this in the docs, by the way. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's one of those things I, I kind of threw this all together. I wrote up a, a quick gist on how to do this because yesterday somebody in the uh, the community Slack was asking the question. That's kind of what, you know, spurred my, uh, you know, creating that gist and then this uh, repository. But uh, anyway, what, but yeah, I definitely want to go through and then uh, try to add something a little bit more formal in the docs and all that and maybe clean this up a little bit i don't know <laughs> i uh, i feel like it's not it's a little bit more raw it's uh you know <laughs> it's not quite ready for prime time but uh you know we'll see but i'd I say mean, ship it and then just make it, it better as you go yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> ship it um so now if we do this i'm going to do a docker ps which just shows it what's running in the background and we'll see that i have now a grafana server and then i have this uh influx server running as well so now I can come back here to my browser and I can open Grafana. Okay, and then uh, we'll see that uh, here now this is actually, you know, again, running on my local host. Okay, and then I have uh, included it so that there's default uh, dashboards. So those are provisioned and ready to run there, okay? So now I have that, so we're we're actually running. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do, I have this you know fancy script again, locally if I would be in the correct directory, because I am a professional, oops. Uh, let's see, it was K6 office hours, right? No, no, uh, KOH. Okay, now I'm here. Sorry. Okay, so we are running the influx DB. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this time I'm gonna remember to run. Uh, and I like, I always like this uh, ramping arrival rate um, script that I have going here because that actually is kind of changing the uh, requests per second that are going through. So now if I come back here and I'm gonna set this up. Sorry, to auto refresh and okay, there we go. Woohoo! So data is actually coming in. So you can see that here in Grafana. Now, um, again, this is a very minimal dashboard. Um, most people will probably create some fancier things, but you know, with Grafana, I can actually zoom into this. And why is there only one data point really showing? Did I run the wrong script? Um, so, all right, but yeah, so we went up to 14 virtual users. Uh, we ended up doing almost 1300 requests, you know, and then, uh, here again, oh my gosh, this X, those failures. Now the, uh, so everything was successful. <laughs> so it uh, failed to fail. Yes. It failed to fail. Damn you. Oops. <laughs> 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 so all right so i'm not sure why i, I could have sworn this one had a little bit more fun graphs on there
but uh, no matter, we'll be switching along to the next one that does. So I'm going to go ahead and kill out of this thing. And then Quick I'm question gonna... for yes. you from Mark. Oh, uh -huh. There's no yes. telegraph involved here, right? Just direct into InfluxDB? Uh, correct. Yes. Yeah, it's just the only things that are running are Influx and then Grafana. And then uh, if I'm, so I'm not going to be mistaking this. That's, those are the only two things running. Um, yeah, so no, no extra pieces. Um, and I'm trying to think, Influx is not the one that's based off of Postgres, is it? That's time scale, I think. Time scales, though. So, okay. But yeah, no, as, as far as I know, this is all strictly direct. There's no extra pieces there. Um, it is. Yeah. It is time scale. That's time based scale on is the one with Postgres. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These are. Uh, those are. Those in particular are things I hadn't run um, previously. Uh, in my past lives, so I'm not super familiar with those. So, okay, so sorry, uh, influx DB. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we'll go through and do the time scale. So I have this again, same command, same. So Mark command. is saying yes. this is right, right? K6 to influx DB and then to Grafana. Correct. Correct. Grafana is just strictly going to uh, the influx DB instance. Yeah. And then there's a note that uh, InfluxDB is written in Go, as all good things are. <laughs> but we like Prometheus better, which is written in Go as well. So. <laughs> so now you'll see here, I went ahead and I, I fired up my script, my Docker Compose again. And that's just making it so that we can start up a Grafana instance for the visualization and then the timescale database. And yeah, so here port 5432 is the default port for uh, Postgres. So that, that makes it blatantly obvious for me that uh, time scale is the one that's based on, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, Postgres. So now here again, I can come back. I can hit my dashboard again. Let me go ahead and clear this out so it doesn't confuse that. But um, So now I have a fresh dashboard again. And then by virtue of the Docker Compose and everything that's in there, I have these two different dashboards created. Um, again, the data format for these underlying systems is different. So the data source from Grafana to that data source uh, is a little bit different. So these dashboards are not exact matches um, between the three. Um, and one of my personal goals is I, I do want to get something together, which is kind of like a uh, more... So we have kind of like a K6 style for these dashboards based on, you know, d irregardless of which backend system you're using for the storage of the metrics. So I'm going to pop to, and hopefully I'm not making people dizzy or anything by uh, hitting all these things. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to run the same script again. So I'm going to do my ramping uh, arrival rate which, you know, runs a little bit. All right, so the test is starting. So now if I pop back over into here and let me, okay, so here it's picked up that this test is running and it's this particular one here. So now if you look at the code underneath, I'm pushing, a, I'm providing a tag ID. It's a custom tag. So each iteration that I run of the unit test or I'm sorry, the load test, uh, will have a different test ID generated. And it's just uh, the script name in this case, and then a, uh, just the timestamp. Um, so this is, uh, you know, the, the epoch, essentially, or milliseconds since the epoch. So now this, we can click on this link, and here we have this nice, you know, we have some uh, cool graphs here. Now, again, since this is the ramping arrival rate, you can see that... Uh, you know, K6 is actually the one going through and then uh, like determining like virtual users and all that stuff. But uh, here I'm specifying the rate. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, the VUs here are automatically being incremented. So that's the yellow line. So it makes it kind of fun to see that, how, how these patterns are, are established. And then, you know, as the uh, request rate is the green line, you know, how that's changing. So... This is a really cool dashboard, and this is one that uh, is, uh, you know, is pretty nice. I mean, it's pretty impressive what was put through there. So I, I do want to get the other ones up to 
snuff similar. So um, is there any questions on that one for for this time scale? No, Mark is just saying he likes your overview dashboard, Paul. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is a, that's a, this one. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't create this one. Some one of our, uh, I think, uh, Mihail actually from the K six OSS team, he uh, created these. So definitely uh, some nice ones. I, I'm just going to have to try to, uh, like I said, standardize and bring the other ones up to snuff and just kind of have a, a standard look and feel. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to. All right. So now the piece de resistance and uh, my French is horrible. So Theo will probably laugh at that. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so here, yeah. So Prometheus. So again, you know, we are Grafana Labs and this is one of the the main things that uh grafana really pushes is uh for the use of prometheus as the back end so this would probably be the one that uh you know we'll, we'll we would recommend going forward so again this is the same thing i have the docker compose it's going to create my uh prometheus uh, instance it's gonna and it will turn on the uh, remote write, which is uh that's an important key um, and that's what uh, the extension will actually push metrics into Prometheus via that, that endpoint. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this guy again. So similar to the others, we have a dashboard that's already provisioned and available in there. Okay, so we have this one. So right now this is empty. I'm going to go ahead and start that. So it'll automatically refresh. And let's go ahead and we'll kick off. Um, the same scripts and I should see this it seems like a, the same thing over and over. So we're going to run the exact same script. Okay. Uh, the same uh, test. Now it's going to be publishing to the new backend, which is with Prometheus. Now I have noticed one thing though, with this particular dashboard, some of the things don't quite refresh correctly. So I may have to actually do a hard refresh here on the page. Okay, or let me go back. Okay, there we go. So yeah, so I'm not sure what in the world's going on with that, uh, with some of this, but we will see that now as the test is running, we'll be getting that data. So, you know, there we go. So this is all coming through. And then this one even has some little extra fun, fun things in there, fun visualizations to do. Um, and that's one thing too with uh, Grafana. There's loads of different things that you can do with these dashboards. And uh, I am by no means, I well, it uh, should be blatantly obvious. I am not an expert on the uh, Grafana stuff. So <laughs> I need to start going I think going you did really well. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank but, you. But thank the you. whole point is that each team should be encouraged to create their own, right? Yes. To track the metrics that make sense to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, one of the nice things, though, too, is that once once I get it there, you know, uh, some of these dashboards, you can have a starting point. And then that way then, you know, because otherwise it'll be a little bit overwhelming yeah. if you start from zero. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's always one thing. So, but yeah. So that's pretty much, there we go, all I've got on those. So let me go ahead and close out of this. I can actually, you know, well, I don't know. Is, so is, was there anything uh, else on this one? Mm, no, I'd like to show something. Okay. Well, then I'm going to, there we go. So, so far we've already, everything that we've shown has been open source. So just yes. to give you, give a recap, there are two things, well, actually three things that are already built into K6. You can output to CSV, JSON, StatsD, and a bunch of others through the handle summary function if, if you're willing to, to write stuff. But there are also extensions, which is like the, the one that Ivan Skiba wrote, which is XK6 dashboard. That's the one that Paul showed that, that uses a Netlify app. So your instance of K6 is sending results in real time 
So that's really cool because you it is an extension, but you at least don't have to set up your own server and, and whatnot because he's very nice and is already um, doing it for you. And then there are a, there are two HTML dashboard ones that are not real time, but they are generated after the test. So I showed you one from Ben C U K, and then what Paul was showing was the time scale. Um, what else was it? Influx DB and Prometheus all yes. going to Grafana and all packaged in Docker. So all of these things so far, you don't have to spend any money on. And I think that that it's a really good base for if you want to if you want to run tests with a single instance or of K6 or even a distributed test using something like K6 operator. But if you do find yourself wanting more, like if you want a distributed test on the cloud, for example, let me show you K6 Cloud Plus. So there, there are two ways that you can use K6 Cloud. So let me get rid of these ones, which is for the HTML report. So let me clear. Uh, one way is instead of K6 Run, you can do K6 Cloud. So you can do K6 Cloud. Let me just start it off. And this is actually uploading the script and, and any data files that, that the script is using to the cloud. So you'll see instead of local here, you'll see that the execution is in the cloud. So let me show you my cloud account so that we can kind of track it in real time. See there, this is K6 Cloud and it's under the showing up under the simple JS um, script here. And this one was one that I ran earlier and this one is running now. So we can watch it in real time. Now, one of the coolest things about K6 Cloud is the load zones. Recently, actually, I think, no, it wasn't last week. It was a few weeks ago. We did one on private load zones so that you can now use your own AWS account. But you can also use um, avail availability zones in our AWS account. So in this one, it just picked up the default, but that's something that you can set by percentage as well. And there will also be performance insights, which is probably my favorite part of K6 Cloud, honestly. But another thing is if, if maybe you're only using K6 Cloud for the generation, but you really want to see it in Grafana, like we were talking, Paul, like what if you're not good at Grafana yet and maybe you don't know how to get to, how, how to recreate this experience in Grafana with the dashboards. There's actually a new plugin. And let me show you, uh, I will post a link in the chat as well because there is, we have documentation on, on, on how to get this set up, which will take it, take you through it step by step. But essentially it boils down to going to the K6 Cloud app on, on grafana.com. This is a free grafana.com account. This is not my like cool complimentary one that, that, we, that we get from working at Grafana. This is just like a free one, just to show you what's possible. This is using K6 Cloud though, so there is that. But you you would just have to install the plugin. You, you can see I already had it installed, but you'll see the plugin here. And if you go to grafana.com, you will probably also need to set up data sources, the, a data source for it, so you can do K6. Okay, a gotcha here is that this is the two here. And this is really confusing and I just found this out like an hour ago, but do not choose this one, choose this first one that just says K6 cloud data source, <laughs> because this is an older one, it will still work, but it's just that this one that I'm particularly showing is way more fully featured. So this, um, this one is not the one that's that's related to the app. This is just the K6 data source. So I thought I'd call that out because I think it's pretty confusing and we need to get rid of one of them or name the other one something else. Anyway, once you've got the right data source, you'll see this K6 here. Look, look, 
It's like a, a separate app on the sidebar here. And this is now recreating what you have in K6 Cloud. So you can go to configuration here, to the settings here, and you can select oh, different organizations as well. Like I have an avocado one for the DevRels in, in K6 and then one for the K6 team. I'm just choosing my personal one and I have different projects. So I'll select default, but you can, you can select different ones as well and everything else will um, also change. But let me go back to default because that's the one where we have a test that's currently running. So I thought it might be cool to see that. Oh no, it's actually already finished because it was only one minute. Okay, so then you can you can see like the the um, the actual results from it. This is supposed to be trying to replicate what is on K6 Cloud. So this is a way better representation of of the results than I think what I could just knock up in Grafana on my own. Because like Paul, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of, of Grafana. I just know like, I just know what I need. So this way is cool because I didn't set up any of these dashboards. This is just all in the app. And it's trying to mimic the same interface that you see on K6 Cloud too, see? So if you're just trying to get whatever's on K6 Cloud in Grafana, I think this is the best way to do it. And this integration is still, is still free, it's a free app. I didn't put any thresholds. I did have checks though, so yeah. Mm. And then you can also click open in K6 Cloud. So there's that link there. And what I had to do also was I, I'm not going to show it, but in K6 Cloud, I did have to put my API token in the settings for, for this app, for the data source in particular. But um, so here, it, it, it won't show it now, but that's where I put it. But once you've got that set up, I think this is like a really easy packaged way of quickly seeing your, your K6 results in Grafana. That's right. Yeah, I mean, because uh, a lot of folks are already in Grafana for their other stuff. So it makes sense to have everything kind of in mm -hmm. one place. But yeah, but that that UI definitely uh, it sets the bar up high for what I got to try to achieve with <laughs> with my uh, little play once for Prometheus and Influx and yeah. all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just oh, just copy man. everything. <laughs> but, but I think it's not just dashboards, though. It's it's the mm. actual app as well. So yes. they, I think you yep. can do way more with it than just a dashboard. Yes. Yeah. I also want to say that if you want to run locally, but just put it to to K6 Cloud or Grafana through K6 Cloud, then you can just so you would run like run it like this. But instead of if you want to run it locally, but still put it to the cloud, then you can just do dash O or dash dash out and then cloud. The difference is that here you'll see execution local, but you can also see that there is a cloud output. So that's useful if you just still want all your results in one place, but you don't necessarily want to run it on the cloud somewhere. It will look exactly the same, except it'll say local execution. Oh, maybe we can see it in, in the Grafana cloud. There it is. Look, it's running. It's nice and blue. <laughs> yeah, so this was something that was made by the front end team. I believe it was Simon Legander, our front end team lead, who, who began it. But um, yeah, it, I think we're going to be having Edgar on to soon to to talk about this as well, but I just wanted to mention it as a really cool thing that they've done. Yeah, for sure. Hey, there was a question that came up from uh, Kang Lee on uh, LinkedIn uh, while you were going through just uh, about, uh, well, basically the gist of it from what I understand is that uh, he's wanting to have the entire thing, possibly what I have, the Docker in the box, but actually running in Kubernetes. So as far as I know, there is no Helm chart is what I would assume would be the uh, the proper way to do that to uh, which bundles everything so that you would have, you know, Prometheus, Grafana and K6 running in Kubernetes. Mm. Now we do have 
the K6 operator, which will yes. get you to the point where you can run distributed tests in Kubernetes. Um, that's something that I'm chomping at the bit to uh, one of these days get uh, playing around in. But uh, but yeah, no. But nothing as far as I know that's going to do that for you in one easy bundle, which again, yeah. I assume would be a Helm chart. That's That's a good point, actually. Maybe we should have that. Yeah, I think uh, he's talking about, he, he was saying that he we could totally move K6 outside of Kubernetes mm -hmm. and running in CICD like Jenkins workers or yeah. GitLab runner. Yeah, but tr give K6 operator a try. Because if you're already using Kubernetes and you're managing a lot of your resources there, then maybe it makes sense to to treat K6 as, as one of them. Mm -hmm. It's... It, will help you with distributed load testing. But even if you're not wanting to run more than one replica of it, it's still useful to manage it as a custom resource like everything else. Yeah. And you can also set things like resource limits for that particular pod, which is probably going to be pretty important since it's going to be running a load test. Okay, I think that was it. Um, I feel like we moved really quickly, but we covered a lot of things. <laughs> I'm parched. So, yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. But anyway, so I hope that that has shown everybody the different, the many different ways that you can visualize results in K6 from from completely open source and local to running on the cloud with hundreds or thousands of, of load generators if, if you want to. That kind of runs the whole gamut of different technologies. That's kind of part of the Grafana Big Tent philosophy that we want Absolutely. to, yeah, we want to be able to work with everything. Yep, play well with others. <laughs> yes. That's what my mom always said. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. We certainly yes. will. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye.